What up, everyone? This is day three of. Here, let me make slower. This is day three of interviewing uh, a bunch of people straight, and we're here with Matt Beatty or Matthew Beatty. Am I saying that right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, most people over here get it wrong. So well done. <laughs> well, I've, I've got a hard name too, but I understand the struggle. And um, Mr. Beatty here is from the amazing band Pigs, 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 Pigs. It's awesome. Um kind of newcomer into the scene and just ma really making waves because you know everyone when you hear bands you have to see pigs always come up and it's um it's an honor it's a pleasure how are you no thank you very much that was uh some introduction um I'm, I'm really well um yeah just just at home um we've just got back from the u.s so i've yeah, just, heard about that i've just kind of um only just managed to shift my body clock back into the, the UK time zone. Um, but yeah, pretty good. And how, what's like the feeling? Because I, I was looking through your Instagram and I saw that a bunch of your um, dates were sold out, you know? Yeah. So, what, I mean, what is that like when, when, you, when you find out that your band, the band you put all your effort into, just sold out like a thousand people? Yeah, it, it, it's... Um... It's weird. I mean, we, we've been a band for a while over, you know, in the UK. And um, so we've toured the UK and Europe for, for it's, it's around 10 years, J just just more. Um, and last year was the first time we, we managed to come over to the US. We were scheduled to do it in 2020. Um, we had three tours booked in 2020, but obviously all of that stuff happened. Um so it was really nice last year to be able to kind of revisit that and have that opportunity, you know, come back around mm -hmm. for us as well. Because, you know, at the time we we weren't sure whether, um, you know, our stock might have dropped and you know, <laughs> the new album might suck and nobody would invite us over um, to the US <laughs> to play. Um, it, it, it's incredible. I mean, everything that's happened for us over in europe in and the uk still to this day surprises me um you know we started out doing shows just in newcastle and we'd be like really really happy if like 50 to 100 people like showed up and to where it's at now it, it it's i try not to um I try not to analyze it and dissect it too much, to be honest. Like I'm just kind of enjoying the ride of it. Um, and it and it seems like in the US, um, the the a similar things kind of happening is like a, a really nice sort of um, groundswell of support for the band. And I think like where. I think we we're, we're essentially I I feel we're we're a live band and if you can kind of the the more people we can kind of get in front of um hopefully the more people will kind of uh enjoy our music and it's been nice like we've been over to the us uh, three or four times now and like some of the cities that we've been to fairly recently are cities that we've we've played before we played in march last year and it was really nice to see like the size of the venue get bigger and there'd just be more people which kind of i don't know yeah like i say I, I don't i try not to analyze it too much but like being in the moment of it and doing the shows is just it's wonderful it really is it's cool beautifully said and um you know just going back to the album having a kick-ass album you know really helps with that because um any anyone viewing if you haven't checked out new album land of sleeper great album and um you. you reminded me because that i need to thank mr callum rooney who he did the artwork for that which is beautiful yeah. artwork and he connected us so the only reason this is really happening is because and the only yeah, it's crazy i found out about you guys because yeah. i was looking at his art and i saw this super awesome moon and i was like well what could that be yeah. and um it's 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 been a blessing but yeah you guys are uh, like a force and like a live, your live show specifically is something I really want to see. Like, I'm actually kind of pissed because you're playing a festival. I know it's not in your hands, but when you come to Atlanta, you're playing a festival and 
I, I can't justify it, but when you guys come again, I pro pinky yeah. promise you I will be. I'll be in the pit. <laughs> Cause like your your pit, your peer pit too. Like what a pit. Yeah. It's beautiful. And yeah. Ooh. speaking of that, like your 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 type of music, it's super interesting because you're not really textbook Sabbath. You're not textbook stoner rock or textbook um doom or whatever the hell you want to call it you're not textbook you, you've got something above and I, I would say that's pretty experimental so yeah i know you've just released a, a new album but let's say in a year's time or whenever you come back to making a new album do you want to continue with the formula of let's just have driving guitars and like a really sabbathy sort of thing or do you think we'll introduce more synths in more maybe two drummers or just like more different weird stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think we're always open to that. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, it largely uh, all of the kind of the, the sort of the more off kilter stuff that we, that we do is kind of derived from like most of us as well, all of us as like band members and, and musicians, we kind of, cut our teeth in a kind of more um, experimental and like left field music scenes as we were kind of growing up. And, you know, alongside that, like all of us have, have been fans of like rock and metal music, but the kind of two, those two sort of different strands of, of the music world for, for each one of us have kind of like um, gone like a parallel course with each other and I think Pigs has been like individually we've all been in bands that have been I think like one or the other so they were either been like you know really super heavy really quite dark bleak uh, uh, metal or rock music or kind of really like quite avant-garde and free form and you know improv experimental music um and i think like pigs is like was the the first real opportunity that we all had to kind of take aspects of of both of those and kind of jam them together <laughs> and and i think that's um yeah that's that's how pigs was born or kind of our our sound so yeah i i don't know i don't know if so sam one of our guitarists he produces all of the records um he records them and he produces them um and he's super talented on that front uh, so a lot of that kind of the the, the sound and the and uh, and the kind of the identity in a sense of like the the production on the albums that's kind of a lot of it sam's doing like we all have our own input obviously and we all you know kind of I, I, I don't know add our own character to you know what what we're doing in terms of like playing and instrumentation wise but yeah it's 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 always kind of Sam has a very clear idea going into each album um what it is he would like to do with the album to kind of give it its own character and 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 make sure we we're, we're definitely not a band i think that we want to kind of have um each album sort of sounding too similar mm -hmm. um so like on the on the recent album one of one of his things was um you, you, in parts like you unless you kind of know it's there you you wouldn't really be able to or you wouldn't like pick it out but like a, throughout like the whole album a lot of the riffs are like backed up with um, a piano. It was like playing the the, the riffs. Didn't even notice that. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> you, you wouldn't because they get it's so, so so like buried in the mix. But it like when you know it's there and you can kind of like and you if you're in the studio and you like a b it and you like mute the piano and then put it back on like it it adds like this extra kind of character and dimension to to the music so he's full of like stuff like that um i don't know we we are shortly turning our attention to to writing the the next album he'll already like sometimes he doesn't tell us until we're in the studio but he, he'll he'll already have plans of, he's a like, criminal mastermind oh yeah yeah they'll just spring it on us um you know if 
they're bringing a string quartet or something. <laughs> <laughs> but we're open to it, you know. It's, That'd uh... be crazy. Everyone marching to orchestra would be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And um, I guess Sam is, I guess then Sam's like a genius because yeah. like the production is really something special with you guys' albums because everything and you know, the mix is really well done. But then there's also highlights. Like for me, it highlights the, the drums and the guitars. But then yeah. when the vocals come in, it's it's crazy. And it's, I didn't know about your background, about the band's background, because that's really interesting considering the um, almost uplifting lyrics of some of the songs and yeah. the super um, open lyrics. I'll, t- I'll say that. They're open lyrics. And it's yeah. really interesting to hear that, you know, they come from, some people come from heavier backgrounds or lighter backgrounds. But you can tell. I guess it's the same thing with the piano. And maybe we'll get like a piano player on tour. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, that, I don't that, want to give Sam any ideas, but we um, it was nice on the so on the last record, um, there's a song called the the Weatherman. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we've really been enjoying playing that song live. But the um, the there's like uh, additional backing vocals on that track, um, by Kate Smith, who's in a, a really great brand band from the UK called Bonicans of Doom, and um, we did the when we did the the bigger headline tour of, of the UK we had Bonicans of Doom as the support band so obviously Kate was around uh, to be able to do the the backing vocals at the show as well which like she's such an incredible vocalist like her range is like wild um, <laughs> and yeah having her on stage doing that just added like this extra dimension to to the song um we have continued playing the song live with, with without her because we, we were really enjoying it and it like it serves like uh it does something a lot different uh to what uh you know the rest of our songs do so in in in, in context of like our live set having that like somewhere in the middle to kind of like bring the atmosphere like you know bring it yeah. drop it right back down again it's 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 really effective um yeah. So so it's like your Beachland ballroom, like Idols. I don't know if you heard that song, but it's like yeah, a, yeah. a piano ballad. Yeah, yeah. And if we get more proggy songs, that would be something super interesting. Because I don't know if you know, like, um, the record Dope Smoker. I know that. One, but... Yeah, and that <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy record! And it's, it's really nice to see, like, when you hear the riff come back, and it's yeah. slower. And I don't know if you guys have done that sometimes. And it's yeah. like, oh, it hits me in the spot. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's you, now you got me thinking. Like, you don't see many heavier bands with like female vocalists, and especially with double vocals. Yeah. And whenever I think of female vocalists, uh, do have you heard the band LSD and the Search for God? No. no. Check them out. They're another one of my interviews, actually. But um, oh, check them yeah. out, and their most popular song has like a conversation between a girl and a guy, yeah. and it's you know beautiful. And just imagining pigs doing that, yeah. like, oh, maybe I should try. I actually have some family in the UK. Maybe I got to go see one of your, your home shows, you know, because that yeah. would be incredible. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess that I mean, I guess that answers my question, how more experimentalism, because if like, imagine like a, a jazz metal album. Yes. Like, it, that would yeah. be crazy. It's, uh, oh. I'm trying to remember the name of a band. I saw a band. This was a long time ago, and I'm kind of revealing my age and kind of <laughs> how tired I actually am. Um, but it was probably it was when I was young. It was like I think they were Italian. It was absolutely crazy. Whilst we're chatting, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna try and find this band. But this Please. was about this was about twenty years ago, and it was it was like a like jazz metal, but like. <laughs> The sort of crazier end of jazz where it's like the time signatures are kind of Ooh. all over the place, but like it's all weirdly like locked in. Like everything's really <laughs> locked in, but it like it, it scrambles your brain to listen to it. They're probably not a band anymore. Italian jazz metal band. <laughs> I mean. Mm. Oh, hang on. Oh, that was them. They were called. 
What are they called? What are they called? Frankly, that's all I needed to Google Italian jazz metal band. <laughs> there can't be many, right? Um, they were called F L Duath, E P H E L D U A T H. I'll I'll email you their band name. Oh, sweet! But they were, yeah. It says here they were active from nineteen ninety eight to twenty fourteen. But so I think uh, I probably saw them live around 2005 maybe yeah so around that time but there you go jazz metal band i appreciate it and, and you're not even you're not even old man i think you're the youngest person i've interviewed oh really or one <laughs> of the younger certainly on the younger end you're not old but I, um, I tend not to think about age too much really. <laughs> and coming back to the, the jazz like not not the jazz the jamming are we yeah. ever gonna see like like metal fish or like the like you guys get into the zone and everyone's locked in and mm-hmm. then you start doing your weird improv singing and then we get the guitarists doing like will will we ever see like a jam almost like a doom um, jam we have it that's kind of how we started out with the band initially and as we kind of progressed it, it started to become a bit more structured and now it's quite a lot more st- structured um i mean on our our first album um feed the rats was kind of that's the way like the the way you just described it was kind of how that most of that album was written there's one shorter song called sweet relief like in the middle of the of the album but the other two tracks on the album i think like i know 14 minutes long each roughly um, so when we played live, we basically took those two songs and we just stuck them together in almost like a kind of, you know, a smaller version of, of Dope Smoker. Uh, and we <laughs> like played from like start to finish for like half an hour to 40 minutes. And, you know, that was the set. Um, Sounds incredible. Yeah. I mean, there's still, I hopefully if you, if you know, if you get to see us live, sometime there are still like we, with the newer songs we still kind of make sure that we leave the door open a crack in certain sections of, of songs like when we're writing them and recording them and we can kind of hear like oh wow like you know that that bit there like when we play that live we can kind of open the floodgates a bit more and we can kind of just like yeah expand it a bit um and just kind of go off on a bit more of a tangent and then bring it all back around again and kind of yeah um yeah that that sounds uh, that sounds incredible to see live especially because i i don't know if you've heard of a elder but they're like another heavier band not as heavy but a heavier band and i was lucky enough to see him live and it's crazy because you couldn't tell any songs apart like it was just one continuous train of thought yeah, and yeah, it's beautiful because you don't know what they're doing live, like what they're impro- improvising, and what they're just you know playing. Yeah. So it's just like you're on a trip, yeah, and yeah. In, in a similar way, in a similar fashion, I would say pigs are a trip. You know, mm. like man, maybe a heavier fuzzed out trip, yeah. but definitely a trip. Yeah. And um, yeah, <laughs> I was that's gonna. Like, that's the aim, like always for for us, like. I mean, even I think bands previous to Pigs, but certainly Pigs as well that uh, that we've been in, it's always like the, like making music and performing music. It's um, it's something to like it's it's to lose yourself in, and it's like um, something that should be really cathartic and mm-hmm. almost like now. Well, it's not even almost <laughs> like where where it is now. It feels like we're at a kind of state where it's like it, it's strange to say it, but I think you you understand with the the way that you've just explained experiencing elders' live set. It's almost like for us anyway, like meditative in a way. Oh yeah, for sure. Kind of like you know, if you can kind of silence the kind of inner dialogue and you're just there in the moment. Like sometimes we'll play shows and like 
the last one we played in um, Toronto, like we've got a few like breaks in the set where yeah, of I'll course, for the audience and everyone can get a drink of water or whatever. <laughs> but we got to like the 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 last sort of section where I needed to address the audience or we needed to speak, and I couldn't believe that we'd gotten that far. Like. It felt like I'd been on stage for like five minutes, and then and then all of a sudden it was like, right, okay, it's time to wrap this up. Which is, you know, it's very strange how it, yeah, you you, know, you completely but, lose your perception of time when it's really good. You 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 really squeeze that kind of uh, time and space continuum. If it's a really bad show, which fortunately we don't have many of them, it kind of goes the other way, and you're like, <laughs> how long? How long we got left? Um, but yeah, I don't think we've we've never really had many of those shows to be honest. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think that's extremely relatable from all musicians because like whenever I play a concert and I know it's a hell of a concert, and I, I do orchestra, so whenever I'm doing like a solo and it just yeah. flies by, that's when you know you did something good. Yeah, but that's it. If 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 you hear something's off, it like rings the whole time, but. The yeah. best music is meditative. That's what I've noticed. Like all these, it's funny. You're it's all the musicians I've talked to. It's yeah. it's always a common theme, you know, is being present, being in the music. And I mean, maybe that maybe that's like the secret sauce. Maybe that's the pig's sauce, like the barbecue sauce. <laughs> the, the barbecue sauce is just it being present. And yeah. um, speaking of being present, this is something I've I've touched on with other people. What's your opinion on? people recording your shows and you know instead of moshing instead of enjoying the moment they'll have their phone up and recording you guys um i uh, seems like a bit of a, a get out i don't have too much of a strong opinion on it it's I, tr I try not to kind of judge other people's actions too much in terms of you know if that's what they want to do and they're enjoying what they're doing, then absolutely fine. Like, I, I don't mind. The only time that I get a little bit irked is when, and again, this has only really happened a handful of times, usually at kind of smaller venues, which I love to play, like kind of everyone, like in your face. But there's been like certain instances where there's been like, I mean, always, always dudes um, on the front row with like the, the, you know, the phone up and the, like clearly filming, but they're yeah. like, because of the height of the stage are kind of like, they're raising it up and it's like, it's right in my face. <laughs> it's right, it's right there. And then I'm kind of like moving around the stage and they're just sort of just like following me. And it's, it's, it's almost like I've got like a, a harness strapped to the front of my, and I've, I've got a phone on it. And that, that's the only time it annoys me because it's like, well, hang on a minute. Like you're now encroaching on my space. You're taking me out of my present, like my, you know, my moment. And I'm now busy thinking about what you're doing <laughs> with your phone. And then I, you know, that then affects, you know, how I feel about the show, how I feel about the performance in some way it probably affects the people that are watching it because mm -hmm. I'm there like or at least I fit because I feel like I'm not kind of fully in that zone I feel like I'm not giving enough or projecting enough for the you know the show to be as good as it can be um so that's like the yeah they're, they're the only times but if you know somebody's up and they want to film the show then that's that's fine by me really um yeah so it's like a domino effect then huh so if someone's being a douche up front it kind of cascades into everything else <laughs> it ruins it's like putting too much vinegar in the barbecue sauce we have the perfect barbecue sauce and he just yeah. he screwed it up that's it yeah <laughs> yeah now speaking of, and now that i'm thinking about that imagine like if you guys once you guys get like massive which will happen soon and then you branch out into like barbecue you know like bands to pop ups yeah it'd be crazy like <laughs> pigs, pigs 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 pork sandwiches yeah, I mean that's it. I mean, it, like the irony is that like m most of us are vegetarian, so <laughs> <laughs> couldn't get any better. 
Yeah, needless to say, we didn't really think the uh, the band name through too much. So <laughs> <laughs> those are always the best band names. They're like Viagra Boys, Psychedelic yeah. Porn Crumpets. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. always the the weirdest names have the best music. It seems, and that's something else I noticed. The the people who make the music that seems the most off putting, right? To um, let's say like moms. My mom's my mom's a mom for sure, right? And she hates my music. Like she won't listen to it. And yeah. And um, where's it going? Here. What I was gonna say is um, like these heavier bands, right? It's so yeah. funny because when people the, the public's outlook on them is they're Satanists. They're terrible yeah. people. They must you know worship. Say I already said that. They um they burn pig whatever. They're terrible people. Yeah. And then you meet them, and it's funny. Everyone everyone I met is vegetarian. Everyone I met is the friendliest person ever. Yeah. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. And I mean, it's beautiful, but it's so funny. Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's like, I, 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 I largely think it's down to, again, like, you know, what I said earlier about the, the music being cathartic and it, it gives a kind of avenue to express maybe like darker sides of a person's personality in a really, really healthy way and i you know having that for me like you know i've i've been in bands since i was like 16 and kind of you know i'm not i'm not saying i've you know always had like perfect mental health <laughs> so I, I haven't but i dread to think what it would have been like or or what it would have become without music as my kind of you know it's always been a kind of a bit of a uh uh, I don't want to say crutch. Um, a good way to release a lot of things. Um, and yeah, I think it's like therapy. Lot... Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And like, but I think you know, if, if you kind of like look at it a little bit deeper, I think it's probably the same in the US, but certainly in the in the UK, I think a lot of people don't have like, for whatever reason, those like. Um, avenues or just ways to express themselves in a in a healthy way and i think that's such a shame i think it probably comes from like you know like the education system and things like that like a lot of a lot of it's like the curriculums and things are kind of honed into a way of like you know churning people out and getting them into whatever jobs are available and keeping the economy yep. and blah 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 blah, blah. but spot yeah. on you can you kind of lose like and I, I i i'm a believer that like every person can can be creative like you know i think people get really locked into these notions of like oh well i'm not a good singer so i can't sing and it's like well no you everyone can sing like even if it's like wildly out of tune you can sing and it doesn't really matter if you're wildly out of tune unless you're trying to sell records right but this is where the lines become blurred because you know you do just because you sing doesn't need you know you don't need to create you don't need to record it you don't need to create a product you don't need to go into a career in the music industry or anything like that you can just sing for the sheer joy of singing right and that go it's the same for like painting or sculpting or writing poetry or you know anything right but i think like people are just so used to this sort of like, well, everything needs to be monetized. And if people don't buy what I'm doing, then it's pointless. And it's like, well, it's not pointless at all. It's, you know, it's good for your soul. <laughs> you're, com you're completely spot on because that's that's how it is. It's the hyper, -com I'm, and I'm really passionate about this. It's the hyper commercialization of yeah. life because everyone's like, you go on the TV, everyone's trying to sell you something. Everyone's trying to make you something you're, you, you aren't. Mm. And um, I guess that is important, you know, having a positive outlook. Maybe that that may have like a, a big connection with your your music and your shows too, and, and metal, you know, like you've spoken. Because again, everyone's just like awesome people. Everyone's super nice. Everyone's super friendly, and it's it's a better, it's a way better um, way of therapy, especially for people who you know don't have that access. So you're you're completely spot on. Yeah beautifully said actually that's that's beautiful um are there any like local uk bands or just bands in general that you would ever want to collaborate with 
Um, there is yes. Um, so there is a an. I don't know how this would work, but again, it might be one of those crazy, you know, jazz death metal things that you suggested <laughs> earlier on. But um, there is a band that we all love called Lancome. They're from Ireland. They do um folk music. Um, some of it real atmospheric, some of it kind of more well, I mean, I suppose like traditional folk can be really atmospheric, but they are brilliant. They're they're so good. They recently played in Newcastle. Um, so we, we went down to watch them there. And they yeah, they're fantastic. So something with them would be really cool. Um I've always wanted to collaborate this got as far as like me <laughs> emailing her once and she did reply and she didn't say no but the uh the time <laughs> scales didn't um work out but um anna von Hauswolf, i don't know if you know her music i don't i'm Very ready to get down there she's amazing incredible vocalist I, I first saw her performing she was supporting um swans in i love in swans well she was a tour spot for swans maybe wow about- I don't know, 10, yeah, probably about 10 years ago. Um, and yeah, to this day, I don't think I've seen a better vocalist live. Like she was just, she absolutely blew me away. Kind of took the shine off Swans a little bit. Like it was, you know, so good. And I, I've seen Swans previous a bunch of times and, you know, they were, they blew me away. But yeah, Anna Van Halswell, that that night, fantastic. You know uh, what? I will I will speak to um I'm speaking to Norm Westberg of Swans yeah, yeah, in uh yeah. in like a, a couple of weeks. So I thought Anna von Hauswolf blew them off stage though. <laughs> <laughs> watch, watch, I will. We'll see his reaction. <laughs> you know what? I will I will send you the link and then you'll have to watch it and I'll I promise you. Oh. But um I guess you have to be a really good performer to do that, huh? Because swans are and I guess I see the influence too. Like mm. the really um pushing i would call it a pushing sound you know the yeah. really pushing sound that swans has yeah but folk metal and jazz metal dude you'll be breaking the music industry would like crack open this is it this is it people are going to be right it's all. your gateway come on over the place this is it you're gonna yeah. bring the music back to the uk yeah yeah oh and here's another one this is a, like a quite a left field choice as well you do you think miley cyrus <laughs> Like, I mean, it'd be great for the, the streaming numbers, I'm sure. But I also genuinely think she's a re- she's like one of the best vocalists in the world. Her voice is so unique. Mm. And it's such like, yeah, this is like a really, really kind of like warm, kind of smoky, like character. To yeah, it. smoky. Um, it's yeah, I think she's brilliant. <laughs> and yeah, so maybe that's one. And in that same that's vein, like, Post I, Malone. Uh, hmm? In the same vein, Post Malone is like a, like I'm I'm waiting for a country or a rock or a metal album from Post Malone because he has a he he used to play guitar for metal bands, yeah. He's got a great voice for it. Did but you, um, did you see that? Like, so we recently it was only just announced like a couple of weeks ago. We were we had a song licensed for the new WWE. Yeah, computer. I saw that. That's amazing. Like, Post Malone was somehow like involved with that in like the curation. I heard. Yeah, I heard. It's right, just, thank you for reminding me. That's it's I gotta congratulate you guys on that because that's uh, amazing. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. Like I'm a really big wrestling fan, so like this happening is just like it's blown my mind. Like really the happens. collaboration's gonna happen. Post Malone yeah, and Pigs. Maybe, Come on. Yeah, Post Malone, Pigs, Miley Cyrus <laughs> and Lankham and Anna von Hoffel. If you're post Malone, you can get Miley Cyrus, you can get everyone else and maybe yeah. like a collaborative album. Yeah, a jazz, folk, pop, rap, metal <laughs> album. This is it. So we have um five minutes left, and I'm gonna give you the big question. And this is always super interesting because you have five minutes, and it's a big question. So you really gotta think, okay? Okay. Three. You gotta give me three songs, three albums, three whatevers, and this is up to your interpretation. So you can do a song, an album, and like your favorite book, or you can do three of your favorite philosophers oh. your four favorite drugs so it's whatever you want right okay <laughs> so, right okay so it's 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 three of of 
a one category, yeah. not not three of all of those that you just mentioned. No, it's yeah. whatever you want. You can do three of all of them. All right. <laughs> so I mean, part of this is kind of picking picking the three, isn't it? Yeah, and you're already at four minutes. I'm gonna go with like, is this is this really boring? I I think I'll be able to do it real good though. I'm gonna go for my my three favorite drinks, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with water, right? I drink loads of water on stage. That's the only thing I drink on stage. You know, it's so important to stay hydrated, right? Of course. Um, on tour now, like in the early days of the band, we were a bit of a car crash we would you know as soon as we were at the venue we just start drinking 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 um and yeah i realized i quite you know as 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 the band's popularity grew the tours got longer kind of realized that wow like this isn't a sustainable thing to do and my voice like it was only really holding out for like three shows at a time anything more than that it was just sort of like i mm. couldn't project it the way we could project it it took me years to realize that it was the it was it was alcohol that was doing that to my voice and not because i convinced myself it was just the way i use my voice right because mm. i'm like really forcing it but it wasn't it was the alcohol so i switched alcohol for water and now my vocals way more powerful can do like longer shows um and for for longer tours um so water What's what's so important? I got the tattoo there. <laughs> like it says water. There we go. Um, second one. Um, this is maybe like we're running out of time though. Anyway, so that's that's um, fortunate for me. Bless you. Um, as my fortunate... dad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you know, I've I've got a less meaningful um, uh, answer for this, but uh, Bundaberg ginger beer. Or ginger ale. Oh, uh, I love ginger ale. Oh wow, that stuff's incredible. Mm. Um, and I yeah, for some reason, like my my my, I've got fond memories of drinking that as a kid. Like in like my my uh, grand and uh, grandmother always used to have cans of that, that and cream soda. Yes, same with uh, my grandparents. Yeah, it's like they, those were the like the two hits the spot. Um, yeah, the fizzy drinks that they had in the house. So like got really fond memories of, of drinking those cream soda as well. Um what's the third one? Third drink, third favorite drink. Uh is it my favorite? I'm quite fond of there's like a zero percent non-alcoholic um Guinness now Ooh. that you get at bars. Well, some bars in the UK do it now, and it, it tastes pretty close to how I remember the alcoholic version of it and that's really nice uh to have so maybe I'll, I'll i'll pick that as as my third <laughs> cool well i don't want to get cut off so i really i really appreciate you it's it's been an honor no, and um so much for, for taking the time. i need it. to catch you guys on tour i'm gonna i'm gonna see if if we can try to work something out but i need one of these days man whenever you guys in atlanta it's it's gonna be a hell i promise you we have the best crowds okay Hey, well, you've got my email and you've got our manager's email. Just Bradley, email. Mr. Bradley, you're an awesome person. Do a little email about that um that festival and see what we can do. I appreciate it. Here, yeah. have a wonderful day. I know it's nighttime for you, but have a wonderful night, okay? All right. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself. You too. Bye.